Hello. So we are going to now start with the drugs for bronchial asthma. So in the previous lecture, we finished what are the various drugs which are used. We just did the classification overview of how they can be useful. Uh, so they can be the drugs which are going to inhibit the antigen antibody reaction or some drugs to stabilize the mast cell. So it doesn't get degranulated and release its uh, mediator, which is mainly the leukotrienes. And then some drugs which will act on those leukotrienes, either they will block its receptor so that the leukotriene is not able to act on the receptor and lead to bronchoconstriction, etc. Or they're going to block its synthesis. So uh, anything which acts on that leukotriene. Then we have drugs that act directly on the bronchial tree. So we have beta 2 agonists, specific beta 2 agonists because beta 2 receptors are present on the bronchular, uh, you know, the airways. So they're going to cause bronchodilatation and then we have methylxanthines and anticholinergics. So let's do them now one by one. So in today's lecture, I'm going to focus only on the bronchodilators. So let's start because they are the most important. So let's go from bronchodilators onwards. Now these bronchodilators, as the name suggests, they are going to dilate the bronchial tree. Any part of the bronchial tree which they will be dilating, they cause bronchodilatation and that helps in relief from the asthma. So you see the initial thing jo hoti hai, the acute phase may the problem is in bronchoconstriction. The bronchial tree is constricted and patient can't breathe. So immediately hume kya chahiye? Ki relax ho jai airway. So the airway should be relaxed. So the patient is able to breathe normally. So for that, bronchodilators are very, very important. So they are very important for uh, prevention of the acute attack or to treat, sorry, the acute attack. And the other drugs can be later on added to take care of the inflammation and all. That's a later process. So the three important drugs which fall under the category of bronchodilators are beta-2 agonists, methylxanthines, anticholinergics. So let's start with the most common, the most important, which is the beta-2 agonists. So they are selective, as the name suggests, for the beta-2 receptors. If we take the other drugs which are also acting on beta-1 receptors, then they'll have the cardiac effects. So remember, beta-1 is present in the heart also. So they can lead to, you know, increase in the heart rate or force of contraction, which is not wanted in these patients. Why would you want tachycardia necessarily? So preferably, we have these beta-2 agonists, which act selectively on the beta-2 receptors, which is present especially in the bronchular smooth muscles. So we have certain drugs which are shorter acting and some are longer acting. The shorter acting drugs may the important ones are salbutamol, also it is called as albuterol. Then we have terbutaline, right? And these are two most important ones. Then longer actings may we have salmitrol and formitrol. There are many more, these are more important. So these are the shorter acting ones. So they act very quickly within, uh, they can act within few minutes. So they're very, very important to manage the acute attack. Now these are uh, beta 2 agonists which are comparatively longer acting as compared to this drug and they are not very quick acting also. So they can be used either for prophylaxis, that is to prevent further attack. This can be used for prophylaxis, short acting ones, because they last for very few hours, action lasts for few hours. So not cannot be used for prophylaxis. So these salmitrol, formitrol, they can action can last for about 16 hours and so on and so forth, the 24 hours. So we can use them for, for prophylaxis. So formitrol uh, and salmitrol, this is very long acting, take care. So it is either use a prophylaxis or it can be used to take care of nocturnal. The rat me hota asthma because in, in the night time is long period of time. So for that you can give this drug at night and it'll work for comparatively longer period of time. So there can be used some element of nocturnal asthma. So these are the two important uh, classifications. Now how they work exactly is because they are going to yes act on the beta two receptor which is which is a G protein couple receptor. You know. So G protein couple receptors aise hote hai, and they have a G protein here, right? And this is alpha, I can say beta and gamma. The whole thing is called as the G protein. So when they get stimulated, they lead to formation of cyclic AMP. 
So remember, whenever there is formation of cyclic MP, what they do is they lead to relaxation. So they cause the relaxation of the smooth muscles. And here, pe kaun sa smooth muscles hai? Bronchial. So they cause the bronchial smooth muscle relaxation. So this is how they are effective as bronchodilators. Now, secondly, these beta two receptors they're also present on the mast cells. So, the mast cells pe kya when beta two receptors they get stimulated, they are going to inhibit the release of mediators. Its degranulation is inhibited, so they inhibit the release of mediators. These are two major mechanisms by which the beta two agonists work. And yes, because they're more specific of beta one. They have less of beta 1 predominant cardiac side effects like tachycardia and all. That's the important thing. Then another thing as I told you that uh, you cannot use it for prophylaxis because they're very short acting. So the best drugs for acute uh, state. So they can be given as a nebulizer. Okay, if you've seen the machine's nebulizer, we put it in and patient ko aise yahan pe ek mouthpiece hota hai and the patient can breathe through that so nebulization ho sakti hai ya rota inhalers mein dry powders dal sakte hain theek hai so dry powder inhalers mein inhaler mein dal sakte hain hum isko theek hai these are the best options when you want to take care of the acute attack oral won't be as quick but they are the best ones to be used for acute attack theek hai then they are not effective not pretty effective in patients who are on beta blockers. Okay, if someone is beta blockers, then obviously beta receptors already are blocked. So there's no fun of giving a beta 2 agonist there. So pe these drugs might not be very effective. You have to then give some other drugs, right? So what are the side effects which are seen? The side effects, the major side effect would be like tremors. So you know that tremors, kyun hote hai? these are because of beta 2 receptors in the skeletal muscles. Okay, so when they get stimul uh, they are activated or stimulated, so they lead to tremors. There's overactivity of myosin in active, you know, contractions are they leads to tremors. Then another important thing to remember in this is that you know if you give this drug continuously, okay, so they will continuously keep on stimulating the beta 2 receptors. Usse kya ho jata hai? There is desensitization. Sensitai of the receptors and the response to the drug decreases. So we cannot give it for a very long period of time. Okay? So do not give them for such a long period of time because of the property of desensitization. Then it can lead to, as I told you, if you give a high dose, obviously because selectivity usually is low doses, high doses selectivity is lost. So if you give a high dose, it can go and act on the beta 1 receptors in the heart and lead to tachycardia. Another issue it can lead to is QT prolongation. And that can lead to arrhythmias in high doses. So these are the major things to be remembered about beta 2 agonists. Coming to the next group that is called as methylxanthines. And these methylxanthines are uh, theophylline. Aminophylline and doxophylline. How they work? They work by two mechanisms again. That is, they are going to first inhibit the enzyme phosphodiesterase 3 and 4. Remember, these phosphodiesterase ka kaam kya hota hai? This phosphodiesterase basically is responsible here if it's cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP gets metabolized by phosphodiesterase enzyme into its metabolites and becomes inactive. So, if phosphodiesterase we inhibit kar sakte hai, then cyclic G uh, AMP will not be metabolized and there will be bronchodilatation. So, this is, this is what they do. They inhibit this uh, phosphodiesterase 3 and 4. So, cyclic AMP is not degraded, not metabolized. And this leads to bronchodilatation. Also, it decreases the inflammatory response, which is seen with the mediators released. It doesn't decrease the release, but only it slows down the inflammatory response. The second 
action is that it also inhibits the or it is antagonizing the adenosine receptors. So what is the importance if it antagonizes the adenosine receptors? Adenosine as such is associated with bronchoconstriction. So adenosine kya karta hai? It contracts the smooth muscles of the bronchia and it causes bronchoconstriction. So if you block this adenosine receptor, it is going to lead to bronchodilatation. So not only uh, agar yeh isko karega, to bronchodilatation hoi not only this, it also can lead to cerebral vasodilatation. That it can also lead to that. So these are the mechanisms by which these methyl xanthines they are going to act. So they are best uh, useful for people in which they are uh, the patients who are getting beta blockers. Okay, if there beta blockers ke patient hai, so we can give this because beta agonists, 2 agonists won't be helpful there. So you can give in these kinds of patients. So it is used in COPD. It can be used in asthma. And also it is used in case of apnea in premature children. Apnea in premature baby. So here we can use kar sakte hai. Now important points to remember for about theophylline. So this theophylline, uh, it is not much used now because it has a very, very narrow therapeutic index. Okay? So you have to keep on monitoring the plasma levels when theophylline is given. So if it goes a little bit higher, it can lead to all sorts of bad effects like it can cause cardiac arrhythmias and all this is because of the blocking of the adenosine receptor cardiac arrhythmia, very important, seizures, hyperglycemia, Sara kuch ho sakta hai when you give excessive theophylline. Amino, and this theophylline is usually given by the oral route. Now, aminophylline jo hai, it can be given orally, it can be given IV. IVs ko kab denge? Jab emergency hai. Suppose kisi patient ko acute attack of asthma ho gaya hai and patient is not responding to those doses of beta 2 agonist. So then you give patient a mine of severe asthma. Asko matlab, you give a mine of by IV route and patient is going to improve. Now jo ye doxophylline hai, iska advantage hai, it has got very less adenosine receptor blocking effect. Adenosine receptor blocking effect is less. So most of these ADRs are less with doxophylline. Right. Okay. So I've already covered these ADRs according to these things already done before. Right. So let's go now to the next drug which is anticholinergics. So again they are also classified under bronchodilators but their mechanism is different. So they are going to target the M3 receptors. So they are going to block the M3 receptors. So this M3 receptors, they are present on the larger airways. And they can cause constriction. So when you give anticholinergic drugs, they definitely lead to bronchodilatation. So if you block these receptors, so there is bronchodilatation of the larger area. So they are very very effective in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. COPD may be very effective in drugs. Okay? Because the beta 2 compared to smaller bronchiolar, uh, bronchiolar uh, you know, uh, muscles and these are the larger area. So they are much more effective uh, for COPD. The issue with this it is they are short acting. They are short uh, sorry they are uh, slower acting not short acting. They are slow acting. So therefore can't be used for acute cases. So they are slow in action. Okay? So therefore not for acute cases. Not very good for acute cases. Uh, then they can be given prophylaxis and later and along with, they can be given along with these drugs or you can give them, you know, with beta 2 agonists. So they can give them with beta 2 agonists. So they beta 2 agonists. So they can give them with beta 2 और एक चीज में याद रखनी है अगर मैं एंटीकोलिनर सबसे क्लासिक एंटीकोलिनर जो हमें ध्यान में आता है दैट इज एट्रोपिन सो व्हाट इफ यू गिव एट्रोपिन द प्रॉब्लम विद एट्रोपिन इज इज इट लिपिड सॉल्युबल ठीक है इट इज हाईली लिपिड सॉल्युबल 
it will enter your brain and it will cause all those side effects which are not wanted we don't want any effect hame to lungs mein chahiye dusri cheez ye hai it also inhibits the muco ciliary clearance क्या होता है हमारी बॉडी में जो म्यूको सिलरी मकैनिज्म होता है इन द ब्रॉन्केल एयरवेज वो ऐसे एक ब्रश की तरह से काम करता है सो so, जो म्यूकस जमा होता है उसको बाहर निकालेगा ठीक है दैट्स इट्स वे झाड़ू लगाते हैं ऐसे करके ठीक है अगर आ, हम इस चीज़ को ब्लॉक कर देते हैं और हम झाड़ू नहीं लगाते हमारे घर में तो सारा गंद अंदर ही रह जाएगा बाहर निकलेगा नहीं तो म्यूकस जो है वो अंदर फंसा रह जाएगा और जब आपको पता है गंद अंदर घर में झाड़ू नहीं लगा फंस गया सो वो लम्ब्स बनने बड़े 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 इतना 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 आपको गंद दिखना दिखने लग जाएगा पहले तो हल्का सा दिखेगा नहीं धीरे धीरे वो जमा होता जाएगा सिमिलरली म्यूकस भी अगर वो बाहर नहीं फेंका गया जो गंद है आपके रेस्पिरेटरी uh, होम में तो वो अंदर जमा रह जाएगा एंड वो फिर बड़ा बड़ा म्यूकस जब जम जाता है तो आपके एयरवेज को ब्लॉक कर देगा एयरवेज को ब्लॉक करेगा तो पेशेंट को ऑब्वियसली प्रॉब्लम आएगी प्लस वो इन्फेक्शन उसमें हो सकती है सो एक सीर सोर्स ऑफ इन्फेक्शन बन जाता है सो इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस म्यूको सिलरी मकैनिज्म झाड़ू लगाना इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एवरीवेयर घर में हो या आपके रेस्पिरेटरी मसल्स में हो ठीक है ना सो वो म्यूको सिलरी क्लियरेंस ए ट्रिपिंग ब्लॉक कर देता है उसकी वजह से वो प्लग बनने शुरू होते हैं प्लग मीन जैसे वो इकट्ठा होना शुरू हो जाता है और फिर आपके वो एयरवेज को ब्लॉक कर सकते हैं सो वॉट बिकॉज ऑफ दीज टू रीजन्स वी डोंट प्रेफर ए ट्रोपिंग सो वी राधा प्रेफर ड्रग्स लाइक ईप्राट्रोपियम ब्रोमाइट एंड टायोट्रोपियम ब्रोमाइट दे आर बोथ लिपिड इन सोलेबल सो फर्स्ट थिंग दे डोंट क्रॉस द ब्लड ब्रेन बैरियर सो दे विल नॉट कॉज एनी हैव अ कोवर देयर सेकेंडली दे डू नॉट इनहिबिट द न्यूकोसिलेरी क्रीम सो ये झाड़ू का काम नहीं रोकेगा झाड़ू लगता रहेगा ठीक है सो आपका जो अंदर का गंध है वो साफ होता रहेगा सो इट विल नॉट डू एनीथिंग ऑफ दैट then tiotropium is comparatively long acting theek okay? hai so it can be used for prophylaxis it can be used for uh, you know for a long period of time for copds and all so these are very good drugs for copds they can be used in acute uh, asthma though they are not the primary they should be used along with beta agonists akele they won't be very quick in action okay that's one important thing about them then they can be used in certain cases of psychogenic psychogenic cause psychogenic asthma so they can be used very good for prophylaxis and again they are used in patients on beta blockers again this is another choice for uh, patients or on beta block The problem with these drugs, as would be with any anticholinergic, primarily would be your secretion that dry, so dry mouth, urinary retention. That would be one issue when you're using these drugs. So this is about all the three groups of drugs which are working as bronchodilators. So let's just go through them quickly once again. The first bronchodilator we did was beta two agonists. ठीक है जी बेटा टू एगोनेस सो दे कैन बी शॉर्ट एक्टिंग और दे कैन बी लॉन्ग एक्टिंग शॉर्ट एक्टिंग का मतलब है फटाफट एक्शन करते हैं सो वेरी गुड फॉर अक्यूट अटैक्स लॉन्ग एक्टिंग थोड़ा टाइम लगाते हैं पर लंबा काम करेंगे तो ये सो प्रोफाइल एक्सेस या रात को जब आपको लंबा आपको चाहिए कि अटैक ना हो रात को आस्तमा का सो so नक्टर्नली रात को हम लेते हैं सोने से पहले तो पेशेंट की रात आराम से निकल जाती है सो पेशेंट कैन बी सेफ एट नाइट Mechanism they act on beta two receptors. So if these beta two receptors are present on the smooth muscles of the bronchus, the bronchus smooth muscles they will lead to relaxation, so they cause bronchodilatation, and on the mast cells they will cause decrease in the release of the mediators from mast cells. Less action of beta one, so that means less of cardiac side effects. Okay, so but definitely won't be effective if beta receptors are already blocked. Side effects, tremors. Tolerance. Long term use of this drug leads to say decent. को इसको बार बार आप बीटा टू को इसको यू नो इसके चिपकाते रहोगे इसे बीटा टू पे ऊपर बार 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 तो थक जाएगा रिसेप्टर इट लीड्स टू कॉज इज डिसेंसिटाइजेशन रिसेप्टर टायर्ड स्टॉप एक्टिंग दैन सो के नॉट यूज दैम कंटिन्यूसली देन टाकी कार्डिया हायर डोज देंगे क्योंकि प्रोलॉन्गेशन हो सकती है राइट right. So next is methyl xanthine. So methyl xanthine's के बारे में you should know that which are the drugs belongs to the category. 
then their action is at the inhibitor phosphodiesterase which is important for metabolism of cyclic AMP. So when cyclic AMP is not metabolized, it leads to bronchodilatation. And the other effect is it inhibits the adenosine receptor. It is concerned, adenosine is concerned with bronchoconstriction. So it blocks the adenosine receptor too and it leads to bronchodilatation. So good option in patients is on beta blocker. The uh, usually problem is with theophile and not preferred because it is a very, very narrow therapeutic index. It's one of the, uh, you know, drugs, if you give them, you need to monitor the person. Okay. And aminophylline can be given also by the IV route and it is used in patients basically uh, if it is not being controlled by beta 2 agonists, the acute attacks, so you have to give IV drug to those patients. Doxophylline ka fayda ye hota hai ki because wo adenosine receptor pe kaam nahi karta so its cardiac effects are much much less. The last one is anticholinergics. We've done anticholinergic before just to remember that they target the M3. Kaun sa receptor? M3. Or M3 receptors jo is hum, uh, because it's the parasympathetic system the predominant hoti hai mare, uh, respiratory muscles mein and that's mostly concerned with bronchoconstriction. So, jab zada ho jati hai, it leads to bronchoconstriction and this is one of the very good drugs in COPD because COPD mein ek uh, jo cholinergic effect hai na, that can be easily reversed. Hai? So, that's why these are very very good drugs for COPD because main tone kya hai? Cholinergic tone. So in uh, pulmonary disease, mein, because it's a main tone, and if you can reverse this main tone of bronchoconstriction, they are very effective in COP. So they are slow in action, so cannot be used for acute attack of asthma. And why we don't use atropine, very important to remember. First, it is lipid soluble, can cross the blood-brain barrier and lead to CNS side effects, central side effects, which are not desired here. And it inhibits, remember, the jhadu nahi maartta hai. Jab jhadu nahi maarenge, to humara gand katha ho jayega andar, infection ho jayega, block ho jayega, airway. So, we don't want that here. So, what with the drugs we use here for this are tiotropium, ipratropium, we have another drug, like oxytropium we use karte. So, they're all very good options which are not lipid soluble and they don't inhibit the mucosal So, they're much, much preferred for these conditions. And again, they can be good on patients with beta blockers. Side effects like anticholinergic side effects, remember two major side effects which is mostly seen are the dry mouth, the secretions are dry by anticholinergic effect and retention of the urine. So probably elderly males may, uh, it can be a problem if you want to give them in those conditions. So with this, we come to the end of this lecture and we finish the major group which is the bronchodilator. The next may we are, we are going to talk about the other drug group which are used for management of asthma. Right, and probably they are most useful in case of uh, prophylaxis and long-term use, uh, as come and as an addition to these particular drug groups. So till then, take care, study hard. Thank you so much.